Okay, welcome back guys. This is episode three of um, protective gear for self-defense training. Please make sure you have a look at at least volume one of these lessons because that gives a general overview of what we're talking about here as to what type of gear and all the different things we're using. But this episode is all about headgear for self-defense training. This is not for boxing, not for Muay Thai, not for MMA. This is for self-defense training. When you wear headgear, it gives you a false sense of security. Because it takes away some superficial pain, you think, oh, I can go in harder. You let yourself get hit harder. You think, oh, my partner's got headgear on, I can hit him harder. The same thing applies to boxing gloves. You still shouldn't be hitting each other full force in the head when you're training. It'll give you brain damage. But the headgear does not increase brain damage. It only increases it because when people put them on, they think they're allowed to hit harder. So as long as you still train at the same contact level, they will only offer protection. They offer superficial protection. They do not stop any form, because what happens, what, what causes brain damage is your brain rocking about inside your skull, okay? So this, when your head moves, when you get hit, that doesn't stop that from happening, okay? Um, so therefore, as long as you train with the same amount of pressure, the headgear is not gonna do you any damage, okay? Now you could argue, you know, this would be a tiny spectrum of difference, not worth really even talking about, but you are adding a small amount of weight to your head. So perhaps when your head gets hit, it goes a bit further because it's a little bit heavier, right? So it moves further, that kind of thing. Um, if you get hit on the edge of the jaw, because your jaw, when you're wearing that, your jaw is a little bit further out, then it causes more turn to your neck. But it's only a small amount. So the difference, as I say, I mean, I'm no expert myself on brain trauma, and I'm certainly no expert on boxing. I'm not an expert on headgear, because yes, I use it, but... I'm not, uh, I don't know as much about it as boxers do, for example, but all the information I'm saying about that is what A, boxers say about it, and also all the scientists who have done studies as to why these could cause more brain damage. And every single one I've read is because you hit each other harder when you wear them. So. The number one reason, before I get into uh, the different types and how we want to use them, the number one reason for wearing them, even when you're wearing a glove, just take a glove if you've got a glove lying around. Okay, okay, I'm gonna punch myself gently. Ow, even just that, that's still hitting my eyeball. Now it shouldn't be that often that that happens, yeah. Because even if that came straight in, at least your head should have done that. So you're not taking it straight on the eyeball. But it can happen. You can still get punched on the eyeball. And even that much, like, even just that. Like even, again, even if you lift your cheek up, that offers a little bit of protection compared to if you're totally relaxed. Now I can feel it much more out on my eyeball. But sometimes you might not do any of that stuff. Sometimes you just, you've already been hit by something. Oh, what's happening? Boom! And it just lands perfectly right on your eyeball. So you're going to get damaged eyes. So we wear headgear to protect our eyes. That is the only reason that I would advocate someone to wear headgear. Um, right, so now we get into the different types. Right. So the one that I don't have here, I have bought a few. I've bought a few of them, but I hated them so much that I sent them straight back. So I'll just show you a picture here. So that type of a headgear, the, the bar version, the face saver, they're called. Oh my God, they're horrible things. Oh, and sorry, there's one other one that I have tested, but I don't have here, one like this. This one has the same problem as the face saver one. 
if you've ever tried one, if I wear any like something like that or any of the other ones and you get punched straight in the face, it's like, Bleh. yeah, it's okay. When I, I, would, I, I got these, the, the face saver and the, the cage one, and I asked my wife, okay, put on the glove, just punch, punch me gently first. And even the lightest pressure, it's like because the bar or the cage is solid and it's rigidly bolted to the frame, it actually increases the amount that it jars your head. Sure, it protects your nose, your facial region, it's, it still protects your facial region and your nose. But the amount of shock that goes through your neck is actually far worse. So I, that's my personal opinion. That's what I've found. And I haven't just used cheap ones. I've used expensive, not like top of the range, but I've used relatively good quality expensive ones as well. And I've found them just horrible. So I would never use. The only reason maybe I would use the cage one, maybe if you're stick fighting or something like that. Because a stick doesn't have any weight. It's got thwack behind it, like crush, uh, snappy power, but it doesn't have that heaviness behind it. So it, 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 it's not going to knock your head back when you get hit with a short stick, like a, you know, a, and a screamer stick or something. So that, that would be okay. So these three, these are the, this is just a same as that type, but just a different brand. I thought I'd say a little bit about, but these are the three different types. So you have your most traditional common type. Okay. Full face. It's called with the cheek protectors. You have your open face version. And then you've got your full face. This is called a kudu mask. Um, kudu is a style of karate, a competition, competition style of karate, where they actually wear these in their comp competition. But it's fantastic for self-defense. They, they wear, uh, they don't wear gloves, but they wear kind of like just wraps or something. Um, and they, they just punch each other in the face. But we would use it so that we can use the open palm and we can actually attack with the fingers. Um, to this. Now, where do we use the three, di the three different types? Okay, these two are used for the same thing. We only use two different types of headgear. Oh, sorry, we used headgear for two different reasons. Which type you choose is up to you. I'll, I'll talk about this type first, meaning both of these. So this one and this one is used for the defender. Remember, I already spoke in the first uh, volume of this where I was talking about how when you're doing your attack defense drills, the attacker wears all the protective gear, the chest guard, the full face helmet, the gloves, the shin guards, whatever he can, so that you as the defender have freedom. You're, you're all, you're, you're naked, right? You can do what you want. You can do all your different techniques that you practice in your self-defense art because you're not restricted to the gloves. Um, but I'm still getting punched in the head, which means my eyes are susceptible to damage. Now I can wear a, I can wear a, um, a mouth guard, that'll, that'll save my teeth, but nothing I've found can save your eyes. I've tried, you know, I've, I've tested out little protective goggles and little face mask things, and they're all just horrible. None of them that I've found have worked at all. The only thing I've found to work are these type of headgears. Um, they don't increase any of the brain knock like the face bar ones do, but they still protect your eyes because this one, obviously, look, it's a little small gap, right? So the glove, the glove can't, even my fist can't get through there. Open palm, yeah, the fingers could still go through there, so you'd, you wouldn't want to do that. But if I use, okay, maybe my fist could get through at a certain angle, but even a small glove is not going to go through there. So that's obviously giving you the maximum protection. I don't like wearing these. If you want maximum protection for your eyes, this would be the way to go. But I don't like them. I feel when I'm wearing it, because of the cheek bars, I feel it's almost, it just makes me feel a bit claustrophobic or something. And I feel just, nah, I just don't like it. The cheek protectors also, they offer a little bit, not much, but a little bit of nose protection. Since your nose, instead of your nose sticking out that far, because the cheek protector comes to here, you're dispersing, if that glove comes straight on your nose, you are dispersing some of the pressure across your cheeks instead of straight on your nose. So there's a little bit of nose protection there. So if you do want maximum protection, Go for one of these. The negative side of these versus these, A, they're generally heavier, they're generally thicker, 
meaning they're heavier. Um, but the main thing is you lose your peripheral vision, or at least some of it. Now this particular one, I've never heard of this brand before, it's called Box Bully. It's actually the only one I've found which has really good peripheral vision. Um, the majority of them, as in the majority that have good cheek protection, as in it's very closed in here, they also take this edge and close it in this way. So y you can only see to here, you can't, like, if you look forward, you should be able to see, like I can see my hand wiggling. I can basically see at 180 degrees peripherally, right? Um, with this on, I can see if I put my hand there, I can see about here. It's, it's only maybe six inches different. So it's not that much of a difference. It's okay. I have seen some others where the cheek protectors are much smaller so that the, this edge here is more down here. But then I find they don't offer any extra eye protection or nose protection, so why bother having them? So yes, you still don't have um, the, the peripheral vision problem, but they're not doing anything in my, in my opinion, so I'd rather not have them. With this one, Put my glasses back on. But this one, you've got zero impedance to your vision. You can see exactly the same amount as with nothing on your head. Okay? Obviously, you get no nose protection whatsoever, but you still get eye protection. Okay, so this is this one, right? Now, I can hit myself right there in the eye, and I can, I can, like if I, I don't know, there, I can just kind of, at a very, very specific angle, I can just feel it on my eye. But any general punching around here, like that, most of the pressure, like 90% of the pressure, is being taken on the forehead and on, the, on this portion here. So that section there, the glove hits that region. So as I say, only if it, like even there, see, it's just barely touching my eye, but because the glove hits this bit as well, most of the force is getting hit there. So I'm getting complete free range of vision. I'm not in any way impeded vision wise. Um, and I get my eye protection. For my own students and myself, I don't wear one of these most of the time. The only time I might wear one is if I'm really going, right, we're going to go really heavy and really free form. We're not going to stop. Right, we're gonna go pretty brutal. Then maybe I'll chuck one of these on for a bit of extra protection. Most of the training we do, if we're going a little easier, I personally don't worry about it. But if you're a little bit worried about your eyesight, and maybe, maybe you've already got a little bit of damage or something, then this is where this, or if you really wanna be careful, this can come into play. Um, so I, for my own students, I leave that up to them. I say like, look, that's up to you. My recommendation is, if you're going easy, you don't really need it. If you're going hard, it's a good idea, but it's up to you. It's, it's really totally up to you as to, again, risk factor versus, um, uh, versus training. Uh, not, that, not that, see, that's the thing. This doesn't, there's no negative, really, apart from having to spend a bit of money. There's no negative to buying one of these. The only thing, really, it's just, I do find, maybe if I wore them, because I've never worn them like long term for a long period of time. So I'm not that used to wearing them. So even the full open face one, this one I can't stand wearing. This one, even the full open face, it still squishes your face a bit. And I, I still feel a little claustrophobic and I still feel like I don't enjoy the training session as much. I don't like having it on my head. I was like, oh, it's just, oh, can we finish now? I just, I want to get this damn thing off my head. So I don't like it. That's really the negative side. I just don't like it. If hitting, if getting your eye damaged was like a really massive risk factor, then I'd wear it all the time. But out of all the training that I've done in my life, it's pretty rare that I ever get hit on the eye. So it's, that's a personal choice really, whether you would want to wear that. This one, however, this is the best thing that you can buy for self-defense training. One reason is it's full, well, obviously it's full face, right? Full face, you can't, you can't hit someone in the eye, even if you're using a weapon like a knife or a finger or whatever, you can't hit someone in the eye. Maybe if you're using a shish kebab stick, since there are air holes, then you could hit someone in the eye. Um, now, the brilliance of this 
comparatively to any other full, and anything else which protects your face. Remember I said before the face bar or the cage, it really shocks your brain. I've tested this out to the same pressure. And if you have a look at this, see how it's not attached down here? It's attached from here upwards, but only by rope, like it's tied on. All right, have a look. Watch what happens when I push on here. Watch. See? There's suspension in the facial mask. When you get hit with that, it literally has a spring in it. So you don't get barely any shock. You actually get less shock to your face than just getting hit because there is some give. There's actually suspension built into the bottom end of the mask. It's brilliant. I don't know why no one's ever talked about that before. I've seen some other people say a couple of things about these on YouTube, but no one ever talks about the fact that it has that suspension. It, it is a massive difference compared to that cage type I showed you a picture of before. The difference between this and that is night and day. It's like, whoa, that's horrible. This is like, oh, yeah, that's okay, do it again. It's fine to carry on with the training. So, like I said in the initial volume of this, this is what we use so that we can practice everything that we do in self-defense. If we're gonna punch, if punching is your main thing, if that's the main way that you strike, then the best way you can train, I, I would recommend using gloves. That's better, that way you don't have to wear a big mask, a big helmet. Um, but we don't use fists to the head, we only use fists to the body. Small certain circumstances, we might use fists to the head, but generally we use open palms to the, to the face, face and head. So I, I can hit that. I can hit that with my palm, no problem. You do need to be a bit careful if you're a stark beginner because that is hard, it's hard plastic, right? So you, you've got to be careful not, for example, you wouldn't want to hit it with your fist. <laughs> That'll actually break your fist, it's, it's hard. Um, so you have, it forces you. That's a brilliant thing as well. It forces you to use the palm because you go, oh shit, that's ouch. So you go, oh, I'm going to hit it with my palm next time. It doesn't hurt my hand. It really makes you think, okay. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's a, I don't know, may, I, I guess a skull maybe has a little bit more uh, padding to it, maybe. Um, but yeah, you know, you hit yourself, you, you hit a forehead, you're gonna hurt your hand. Hit a forehead with your hand, nothing, okay? Um, beginners, we don't usually tell them to hit this with fingers, simply because they won't have the training yet in their fingers, there's a chance they could damage their fingers, because it is quite hard. But as they get more advanced, I will attack that <laughs> with my fingers. Now I can feel a tremendous force go through my fingers there, um, and that's plenty. Because you, you're not, you, whenever you do finger strikes, you never hit full force with fingers. You don't need to, there's no reason to. So you only ever hit about that hard with fingers. It's your, if you want to hit with your palm, then you can put a bit more force behind it. But that's the idea behind that. You can do all your different strikes. Now the only negative to this type of one is obviously if you were to do a round punch, from the front it's fine, but a round punch, because there is a bigger distance away from your face, if you did like a heavy hook punch to the side, because it's further away, it's a lever, more, more leverage, and maybe it'll jerk your neck a little bit more than, than wearing either one of the smaller ones or nothing. Um, yeah, so, so there's that. But what we tend to do is, that's why, that's why I wouldn't recommend using this if you wanna hit harder like boxing training, I wouldn't want to use this if I was doing boxing training and we're both wearing gloves. I'd rather just get hit with the glove. But for self-defense training, we can practice our eye strikes, practice our palm strikes. We can still do like, you know, heel palm strikes to the side of the jaw, but because I'm not gloved and he's wearing this, you know, there's, you can never train 100% realistically, no matter how you train, unless you blatantly go out and fight each other full on. Um, there's always a compromise as to how you're going to practice to train. But I, I, just, I just hit with, you know, with medium pressure. I don't hit full force when I'm doing any head strikes. When we train in what we do, we always say, okay, head shots, light to medium force, depending on who you're training with. If I've got a very small person and they hit me and their full force is okay, well, I'll say, hit me full force. But if I'm training with a bigger guy, I'll say, okay, just hit me lightly. Okay, no more than that. That's your limit. Don't hit me harder than that. The person wearing the mask sets the limit. The body, however, you can wear one of these big boys, 
and, and I can say, you, you can be the biggest bloke in the world and you can hit me as hard as you want and it's not gonna go through that because it's like five inches of padding and it's dense, hard padding, so it's not gonna go through. So that is headgear. Oh, and I was gonna mention this one. There's some pros and cons again. So this is what I wanted to tell you to look out for. These are pretty much standard across the board um, as to what they do and how they function. Um, these, if you want one of these type, make sure you know, you're not losing anything more than about six inches of peripheral vision when you put it on. That would be your primary goal when looking for one of these with cheek, cheek plates, cheek plates, is make sure they're wide in the eye sockets, nice and wide out here. If you're looking for, if you choose, if you wanna get an open face one, the main thing with this is, oh, and lightness, weight. The lighter, the better. That's one thing I really like about this one, what it's made out of. Well, actually, these, these are both quite light because this is very thin. This is as light, but it's thicker. It's got more padding on it. So, this one, okay, um, if I pop it on, okay, can you see, see this? The other one, this edge here comes to here. It comes to my eye, like to the edge of my eye socket. So when I was punching myself with the glove before, it was protecting my eye nicely, okay? Um, this one does nothing. Look, it's still hitting me square in the eye. This is too far back. There's too much, the, the, the padding here is too far back this way. So if you wanna get one of these and protect your eyes, you have to make sure that the padding on the sides, oh, and the forehead also. See how the forehead, if I put it on properly there, it doesn't come very far down my forehead. So again, there's a large space around my eye. This one, it comes further down the forehead to the eyebrow and further to the crease of the eye here. Not enough to impede the vision, but enough to protect the eye. So this one gives me zero eye protection. So what use is it? Well, it doesn't really have much use actually. Um, right, so the one thing I do like about this one, it's still very, very light. And if I could, there's a lot of, I've only tried one of these so far, um, this particular one, but there's a lot of other brands that do this same one. And I'm gonna have a look and research into those because this, compared to this, does have, now generally around the front and the sides, it's pretty similar in terms of its padding. But the back, it's, I don't know what it's there for really in terms of, because this is meant for like kickboxing and stuff and they're not allowed to hit to the back of the head. Maybe it's there for accidents or something. But anyway, look, it's got a double, it's got an extra pad on the back. So that's the normal thickness of the padding here, but it's got a double pad on right on the back of your skull. Okay, so that's really thick. It's about, about that thick compared to that thick around the rest of it. This, all it's got on the back, I mean, it's, a, you know, it's still a little bit padded, but it's really not much. It's just the straps on the back of your head. So if you wanted to be doing some drills where you wanted to practice, for example, let's say someone goes for a low tackle and you want to be able to elbow them on the back of the head, you wear these ones, which I'll get into in the next volume, the, the, the elbow pads, and they wear this. So you've got that big pad on the back of the head, now you still wouldn't want to hit too hard because the back of the head is such a vulnerable area, but with the pad and with this, you could at least, boom, oh yeah, you could at least do it to the level so that you know the strike went through. And if, 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 you know, if I'm down there and I go, oh yeah, that, yeah, I think, and, and, and then the guy standing up says, well, yeah, I mean, I only hit you with like 10% force. I can say to him, right, well, yeah, if you'd hit me full force, I definitely would have fallen down, okay? I wouldn't have continued through with the takedown at least. So that, that's a nice little feature of that one. So I am gonna see if I can find something like that that has the eye, basically a combination of that and that. Eye protection from the front, but head protection, so you can clunk them on the back of the head, um, at least with light force without doing them any damage. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about headgear. That is my view as to when and why and how you should use them. So in the WTBA school, we will be implementing these as my father used to, um, as a major area for our training, for doing our eye strikes and our palm strikes and so on. And then this type of thing, that's an optional extra for the individual. If they really wanna protect their eyes, they can do that, but it's not, it's not a necessity. This one is a necessity because there's no way that you can train eye strikes without that.
The only way you can train eye strikes without that is either poke people in the eyes, which is not great, or pull your shots short. Which, yeah, you can sort of, uh, you know, oh yeah, could have poked you in the eyes there. But that's okay, it's okay just for your general movement training. But eventually you need to physically put some force through to check that you're actually getting something in. So this allows you to train those eye strikes. It allows you to train your palm strikes. I do also have coming, but that won't be for a while, so I'll, I'll do that separately, a throat protector. You're not gonna, no throat protector will be able to take heavy shots. But again, maybe, I'm hoping it will, just that much, just light pressure, just so that you can at least attack the throat and contact with light pressure. Because see, when you're sparring, when you're doing any kind of self-defense training, the difference between no contact, like not touching at all, and light contact, like touch contact, there's a huge difference there. Because you know where it landed, you know it got through, at least if you touched. Whereas with no contact, you don't really know if it connected or not. Like I was saying before, if I throw a punch here, but I go like that, sorry, not oh my, like as in you're throwing a punch there, the punch is coming here, but you're going, uh, and pulling it short, a couple of inches short. My head as you throw the punch might go like that. Neither of us, it's, it's too close to tell. Would you have hit me there? I don't know. But if we do touch contact, now, oh yeah, yeah, you still landed that punch. Whereas if you were trying to do touch contact, and that happens, well, no, okay, I got out of the way. I, I now know that I got out of the way. So yeah, the difference between not touching and touching, there's a big difference in terms of your ability, your, the skill you're learning. Whereas going from that sort of touch light contact to medium or heavy contact, yes, you still learn more by doing that, but it's not as big a difference. It's like the biggest difference comes from being able to physically hit your partner, even with light pressure. Um, so that's what I tell people, like, you can train light pressure and have basically zero risk. When I say you have to train with light pressure, the only time, you, you do need to train full force in terms of defense though. You see, so the attacker coming in who's wearing the gloves. Not so much with straight punches, because when you defend against a straight punch, if you're getting out of the way of the straight punch, doesn't make that much difference whether it's heavy or light, as long as it's fast and, and going through, and it's going to go through me if I don't move. Because if I'm just letting it go over my shoulder, well, the power's going that way. I'm not, I'm not taking any of the force. So the only difference is, of course, if I actually do the totally wrong thing and I get hit, that's a difference. But if I can train myself, if I really don't want to hurt myself at all in training, I can train fast so that any punches coming to the front of my face, which is going to hurt the most, I just train fast but no weight, no heavy power behind it. That way, if it does contact, it's, it's just a bop, no broken nose, nothing bad, no kinked neck, whatever. Um, but I'm still learning the exact same movement. If I can do that and make it work against a fast punch, the movement that I do, there's nothing different. If it's a heavy punch, there's no difference. The only difference is, if I get it wrong, I get hurt more if it's a heavy punch. Whereas with a round punch, anything coming from the side, any hook punch, haymaker, whatever. Again, there's no difference if the defense you're using is this, going under, or jumping over there, or getting back, doing a very evasive technique, but with a hook punch, you don't always have the time to get out of the way, okay? There's not always that option, so any good martial art should have some kind of a defense where you literally just have to, have to stop the thing, right? You've got to block, stop yourself getting hit. Um, so under that, those so circumstances, when you are dealing with pressure coming into your body, you haven't had the chance to get out of the way of the punch, that's where there's a big difference. If you're only ever training light punches and then someone throws a heavy one, it's gonna knock you off balance. So there's that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the end of my lesson, uh, my video on headgears. Hope that's given you some good information as to what type to get and how to use them. Generally speaking, like in most countries, there's only one one or two different manufacturers that make these, they're not that popular. Um, like in Australia, I think there's two different makes, but they're exactly the same, they're just a different brand. Uh, and everywhere I've seen them around the world, yeah, they're, they're generally the same thing, so you can pick them up anywhere.
For my own students, again, I can get a discount so they can buy them through me and get them for cheaper. Because I never, I never mark up prices when I sell my students gear. They pay me for the classes, that's enough for me. And if they buy videos from me, if I can get, if that costs $100, but I can get it for $70, I'll order it for them and they pay me $70. I don't, I don't wanna earn uh, extra money from selling my students this stuff. Um, again, this kind of stuff, not a brand thing, find something that suits you. The stuff I've told you about what to look for, same with these ones. It's not about a specific type or a specific brand. It's just more about what you're looking for in the equipment. Because the difference is with the glove, the glove is not for you. The glove is for the person you're punching. So if you say to me, oh, I don't really like that glove. It's not very comfortable or something. As long as it fits, you'll use that glove because I know that glove is safe for my other student. Whereas the headgear, when you buy a headgear, you're buying it for yourself. So that's up to you as to which one is most comfortable, which one is, fits the best. You know, it does for you what you want it to do. But when you buy a set of gloves, you're buying it to punch somebody else. So for my students, they will take my lead on that and say, no, no, everyone's gonna buy that same glove. That's how we're gonna do things. Okay, so that's the end of that one. Um, next volume, we're gonna be talking about the rest of the stuff. Knuckle protectors, elbow protectors, groin cups, chest guards, shin guards, mouth guards, because there's not as much to talk about with those, so I think I'll just bunch those all into um, uh, one next video. So see you soon, guys. See you in, what episode is this? In, in volume four for the next episode. Enjoy your day.